Hey everybody, I've got a project to share with you today. It's one of the last things we intend to do to the fifth wheel RV that we're taking down to Belize. Of course, that's crossing into Mexico from Texas all the way through Mexico down to Belize. That's going to be a permanent destination for this fifth wheel, more than likely. We have property down there, as you guys know. So, one of the big challenges with a permanent live in RV that you're traveling in is what do you do with your septic hoses because they're dirty and uh, you don't really want to put them in your storage in your belly box so in looking around at what other people have done we uh, realized that there were commercially available uh, tubes that you could mount underneath which will allow you to put your hoses in and store them underneath. Then we looked further and realized that for about half the price you might be able to do a, a, a better option. Use a plastic fence post that's commercially available at Lowe's and Home Depot and build that into a slightly larger diameter storage tube mounted the same way under the fifth wheel. So in looking at what other people had done, I kind of uh, weighed all options and came up with what I, I think is probably, for quite a few people, the, the best approach to doing that. And I just want to showcase what we're doing here uh, with that project. The goal is to add two more. I've already got one done. So I'll be, sh I'll be showing you guys the process of building the second two. I kind of had to get the first one done first. So this is what it is. Um, you simply grab the knob, you pull, the lid goes under, and this is a tube that goes all the way across and you can just feed your septic hose right in. Now the great thing about these, as uh, other people on the internet have mentioned, this is a big enough dimension here that your tight 90s and other fittings that aren't just hose will fit in here. But we're going to have three for st various storage. And uh, it's pretty simple construction. You've got a lid. This is shock cord. Gives pretty good secure uh, attachment. And it's attached uh, via one of these blocks on each side to the frame. Most of the parts that we have are, uh, that we need are all right here. This is a 5x5 five five fence post, a uh, plastic fence post. You can get these at Home Depot and Lowe's. So we almost need the full length, but we'll cut a little bit off and we'll show that in a minute. These here are part of the same fencing system. They're simply caps to go on the fence post. Also available Home Depot, Lowe's, and any of the other construction stores. So in order to make these lids <laughs> easy to pull off you need a knob these are knobs that I ordered on eBay and I got them that way because they were dirt cheap I think I spent like a buck fifty a piece uh, but you can get similar at a con any construction store nothing special about it except that it's plastic so it'll weather well the way that we are keeping our lid secure is shock cord I have other uses for the stuff and scored this big roll for like 50 bucks, 300 feet. It's a 3 16 inch bungee cord. Now there's no reason to go do that uh, unless you feel like it. But the easiest thing to do is just go to Walmart or uh, Tractor Supply and get their cheapest, flimsiest bungee cords. You'll have a hook on this end and a hook on that end and what's in the middle is shock cord. So you'll want probably about 20 inches at least per cord if you just buy those and cut the ends off. 3 16 inch thick is, is a good size. A uh, quarter inch would probably work fine too. Last but not least, a lot of these RVs have got uh, underpinning that will sag a little and you really don't want to push it up hard uh, and other things that may not allow you to mount the tube hard up against the frame. These are blocks. They're made from HDPE it's the same stuff in, in the marine industry. They call it starboard. And we're using this as a standoff. We're going to mount this to the frame on either side. So these here are probably trickier to find, but there's two or three sellers at any given moment on eBay 
that are selling scrap from industrial manufacturing. They will either cut it to size or you'll be able to get a chunk that you can cut to size. This stuff cuts real easy with a table saw or a circular saw. Now, I was able to get these in exactly the size that I really wanted pre-cut on eBay. Uh, not very expensive. So that's the last piece of the puzzle. It's called HDPE. It's also called Starboard. A couple other things that are technically supplies, screws and fasteners. The way we're going to attach this to the frame is we're going to drill a hole and countersink it for the head. That screw is going to go up that way right in the middle where I've got my X into the frame. So once that's in place, the way we secure the pipe to the standoff is by drilling these screws through there. These washers provide a more load bearing surface. So it's the washer and the screw together. These are nice, they're cabinet screws and they go through. So in order to actually drive these screws, we're going to put a hole down here on either side and um, it shouldn't really cause any problem to have some small holes down here. Uh, in fact, there's you know always that chance that there might be something that drains out of your hose <laughs> and that way maybe it'll drain out the holes instead of the lid. So I've got three of four required for the last two tubes. Uh, marked with a little X showing the center. Um, I imagine most of you guys know how to do that, but just in case uh, somebody doesn't, you just take a straight edge and go edge to edge. Where those two lines cross, that's your center. It's important to take a lot of care when you're drilling a hole as deep as this. If you're not very close to perpendicular, it's going to wander. You'll end up penetrating in the middle, here, <laughs> and somewhere substantially off-center over here. So we actually did a really good job of coming out in the middle. The next thing is we want the head to countersink like this, so we need a drill bit that is slightly bigger than the head. This fits the bill. I'm going to just carefully go down a little ways. That's how far down we are. So there's the number of threads that we have sticking down and that should be just sufficient to screw into the frame. So four more of those and we're on to the next step. Okay so the next step here is to mark for the cut and for my RV it situates nicely under there, symmetrical on both sides uh, with about a 90 inch length. So I've cut, I've marked this at 90 inches and uh, it is a little bit of a trick to get a square cut. In my experience the best thing to do is just get a speed square. This is ginormous. Uh, I borrowed this. I'm supposed to have one in my RV and it's smaller and the smaller one will do fine but a speed square is uh, very useful. So I've got this set up for a pretty shallow cut here and we're just going to trace, trace the line. done. Uh, it could have been better and it could have been a lot worse. Uh, it mostly matches up to itself and now just because I'm a bit of a perfectionist I'm going to use a file and I'm going to 
straighten everything out and uh, if it's not dead square, it probably doesn't have to be dead square, but it's at least going to look like it has a, a perfectly square uh, cut and a finished edge. This, this actual, this cut here is pretty poor. You can see why I, I want to file some of that smooth. But uh, in, uh, you know, three minutes of filing, I'll have it all perfectly straight and square. With the pipes or uh, posts cut, the next step is to fashion our lids and to kind of relief the tubes so that they uh, don't interfere with the bungee. And at the same time, we'll be setting the uh, bungee or shock, shock cord up on these lids also. So the shock cord runs in a hole here, out a hole there, and then so that it doesn't hang up and interfere with closure, we have a slot on both sides. Uh, and of course we have to mount our knob. Okay, so one of the first things here is to slot these and uh, you've got a lot of room to work with because in my mind the, the most important thing is simply that you don't notch it so far that you have a visible <laughs> a visible hole when the, the lid is on. And um, so I kind of probably took a haphazard approach to it and simply used the width of my narrow tape measure as a guide. This is a five inch tube so we're going to go at two and a half right there and that's the mark I'll drill on. Notice that that's fairly square. Your, the knob is fairly square to the, the lid. Um, it's a little bit tricky to get that to happen because this comes to a point and somehow you've got to screw that on. What you have to do is you have to file a square plane right in the middle. The key to knowing that what you've done is going to be approximately square to the piece is that this patterns out as a square. Now, because this is nice and flat and square right here, I can drill a hole right in the middle, I can attach that, and that will sit square and it, it'll be firm on there. And I'm gonna, gonna do it wrong to show you how this patterns incorrectly if you're not square. So that's not square, and I hope the camera can show that this is kind of a trapezoid pattern. But if you can, if you can correct your angle so that what you've done is you've created a square pattern in that flat spot that you've filed, well then the knob will sit square. So I'm going to uh, finesse it a little bit and get a square pattern, and we'll drill a hole and we'll demonstrate that it sits pretty square. So 
here's the end result. It's not flawless, but it's pretty close to a symmetrical square. That was a pilot hole. This is the right size for these screws. The screws they supply with the knobs, this will be true for any cabinet knob, cabinet pull knob, is going to assume something like a half inch cabinet face and of course the thickness on these is almost nothing. So what you'll find is this bottoms out long before it gets tight that's bottomed out. You see we won't be able to tighten so you have to cut these and the easy way to do this any of you, maybe most of you, uh, one of these cheap strippers. There's a couple different types of stripper uh, electrical stripper, but uh, many of them have these holes right here. That's for actually for cutting screws. And uh, so we put this, many of them you have to thread in. The better ones you have to thread this in a position. This is cheap, cheap, cheap. I, I don't know why I have this one actually, but uh, you stick it in there and you cut it. And then I'm going to back it back out and put a dab of red Loctite on, as I have with all of them. Just a dab. Okay, so the next thing that we're doing is we are... Uh, marking to drill holes for the shock cord. This is about five and an eighth, so we're going to mark two and nine sixteenths right there. And again, I'm just using the width of the tape as my, as my uh, dimension from the edge because it's not that critical except that we want it uniform. So it's just an easy, easy cheat to get a uniform result. After some trial and error, I found that uh, eight inches back from the edge was pretty good for the uh, insertion points for the chalk cord. We're going to go eight inches here and then two and a half This is about 20 inches, give or take. Try to tie two knots to make it just a little bit fatter than a single. Usually works. Basically, what I found is you want about an inch, inch and a half here. And uh, so I kind of just gauged it by hand. 
and it doesn't matter if it's a little long or a little short. Short will just make it a little stiffer. Uh, long will make it a little looser. But this is a good tension right here. You don't have to fight it much, but it definitely uh, has it closing fairly tightly. Okay, so the last thing to do is mount these and drill our mounting holes on these tubes. I want to back up just a little bit. The way that I mounted this one is that I found a mark at the front of the RV that I could kind of eyeball and I took measurement back a certain distance and I made a mark and then I duplicated that on the other side and when I say I made a mark I made a mark uh, right approximately where the uh, frame rail is. Of course because this is an all-weather RV you can't actually see the frame rail but you know that the frame rail is right in line with these screws. Uh, because this one is square, is we're going to measure back from that one a certain distance equally on both sides to mount these. And then we'll pattern that out on this so that we can pre-drill our mounting holes and then we can just put it up there and mount it. To give the right space in between these, I want five inches. Well, that should be right there. Seventy-two and three quarters. So we need to come in eight and a half on each side. I'm going to come in one and a quarter from the edge on both sides. Those will be my holes that I will drill so that I can put screws up through. And the screws will engage this block right in those spots right there. I'm having to mark again. I already drilled the holes previously. The math that I showed was correct, but my measurement from center to center under there is wrong. So we're going to have to do a take two here. This was originally going to be the bottom side. I'm now going to make it the top side. Ignore those holes. These little holes here are the ones that our screws are going to come up through and hold it to, to, to hold this uh, assembly to the block that's already mounted. Drilling bigger holes on this side because this is the side the screw goes uh, this is the side I send my screwdriver through in order to screw uh, uh, tighten the screws. That one really jumped. Okay, so the smaller holes in there are going to accept these, and I'm just going to by by hand get them started where they go. It's not easy. It's not easy to find the hole. That it's coming up through. Yeah, it's coming up right the there. Right there is where it's starting to come up through. Uh, my finger's not strong enough to send it up far enough to really see very well. And it's coming up but there here's what we. These, are wrong. these holes are wrong, you betcha. Now, you can look in there and see what's going on. Okay, so I've measured my distance here. And uh, I've got the screw uh, driver bit fed up through the bottom, engaged into the screw, and we're going to go ahead and start to screw it in. Screw number two. A little more on screw number one.
Okay. That's 15 feet of pose, and uh, I don't think that's gonna even come close. Yeah, there's you can put probably at least 30 feet of hose in just one of these. All of the fittings will fit in there just fine. 